When you go out to eat, you could go ahead and buy a pre-made burger which has been made with some amount of care and consideration. Chances are it will turn out to be good because the chefs inside the kitchen presumably know what they are doing. But you could also go to a subway and make your own sandwich with your own ingredients. Maybe add a little extra cheese, add some more lettuce, keep away the olives, whatever floats your boat. Now imagine if you had that kind of customization while purchasing a bike or at least something close to it. This is the new TVS Apache RR310 and while it remains mostly the same as it was before, TVS now has a build to order program through which you can add two kits to this bike. You can go to the company's website and use the web configurator or you can download an app to see what the kit options are and customize it to your liking and then order the bike. Now what do these kit options add and how do they change the bike? Well, stay tuned to find that out. Usually when I review a product, I try to race towards the performance section, but today I'll have to make an exception and talk about the cosmetics first, because there have been a few tweaks here and there. But before I get to that, let me take a moment to appreciate the effort that TVS put into designing this bike. Even though the design has remained almost the same since we saw the bike as the Akula concept at the Auto Expo, since then, since its inception, TVS has found a design language which they have kept largely the same and after so many years, it still looks so enticing and so good and so mean. Now, for color options, you have the same two color options. You have the red and the black, but if you kit it with the dynamic or the race kit, you have the option to go for this TVS Racing inspired paint scheme and you have a very vibrant palette. You have some blues, some reds, some whites thrown in there. And I really do like it. You can also get a custom two digit number on the windscreen as you can see here. And this can be any number that you choose. In fact, you know what? Pause the video, go down into the comments and let us know what number would you put on your bike if you were to buy this one. Okay, so coming back to the bike. Now, I know that this flashy paint scheme might not be to the liking of everyone. And for those people, they can go for the vanilla red color or the more stealthy black color option. Another customization option you get is that uh, the standard bike comes with black alloy wheels. But as you can see, this one has red alloy wheels. You can get these red alloys with the black, the red or this color option if you have the race or dynamic kit equipped on the bike. So let's talk about the highlight of this bike and that is the two kits that are on offer. The first is the dynamic kit and the other one is the race kit. Now you can have either one or add both of those. This bike that we have comes with both the dynamic and the race kit. So what do they offer? Well, let's start off with the dynamic kit because while it is the more expensive of the two, it also packs in the most punch because with that you get fully adjustable suspension setup. The front forks can not only be adjusted for preload, but they can also be adjusted for rebound and compression. And this right here is the key to your happiness because even if you don't have a screwdriver handy, you can use this key to change the suspension setup both at the front and at the rear. And this really does make a lot of difference because if you are someone who likes to take the bike on the track frequently, but also ride it on the streets, then you can tweak the suspension to be a little more comfy, a little more, you know, soft when you're out on the road and then firm it up and make the bike a little more controllable when you are out on the track. If you want to know more about how this bike performs on the track, you can check out our track test review of this BTO unit of the RR310. Moving on, you also get a brass coated chain. Now this is something which common folk will definitely appreciate because it will increase the life of your chain. Brass is more resistant towards corrosion. So when it's raining, when it's damp, there is less chance for the chain to be corroded and to rust off. So this is definitely a very good option. The other kit that you get, which is the race kit, 
well it changes the ergonomics slightly so with the race kit you get clip-ons which are slightly lower it's a little more aggressive and you also have the foot pegs higher by 30 mm and what this does is that when you're on the track and if you are a capable rider you can definitely push this bike a lot and achieve better lean angles and improve your track timing I must say that even in this racier setup, the bike does not feel too aggressive and uncomfortable for city riding. I have been using this bike for the past 2-3 days and have had no issues even while I was stuck in traffic. And uh, when you get an open stretch of road, you can ease off and not have that much pressure on your shoulders and on your arms. So this really is a bike that you can ride on weekdays when you're on city roads and relish when you go out on the track or on a fast straight. And the best part is that if you have an RR310 from the 2017 year and onwards, then you can retrofit all these features to your bike as well. The brilliant 5-inch color TFT display is still here, it's very functional and you also get multiple riding modes with this bike because it comes with ride-by-wire technology so you have your urban, rain, sport and track modes but now the instrument console has a few additional features. Now if you see, if, you, if I go to the menu, you can get trip meters but also have a new day trip meter which shows you statistics related to your day's riding so it shows you things like you know the amount of distance you've covered what was your average speed or mileage and then you also have another handy feature which is digidocs so you can store up to three documents on this so this can be things like your driver's license your PUC or the registration certificate also you can come to preferences and set a custom speed alert so you can have a custom you know speed value and if you go over that the bike will warn you that you have gone over the speed limit and it also has a dynamic rev limiter well, basically what this means is that when you start your bike on a cold winter morning it's not a good idea to rev it too much so there is a dynamic rev limit indicator which tells you that you should not be revving after a certain point and as the engine becomes warmer the indicator value changes so that's a very nice addition these new changes might not look that big but i think they are really great additions to an already capable machine and they make your everyday riding that much more easier now if i was to nitpick there is one tiny thing that i think that tvs could have worked on and that is the placement of the switches on the left side um, even with hands my size they're fairly big i did find myself reaching out a little bit more to reach the indicator or to change the riding modes so that is one small thing that tvs could work on now let's finally talk about the engine and the gearbox of this bike and how it rides. Well, I kept this part for the end because nothing has really changed. You still get the same 312.2 cc single cylinder liquid cooled unit. However, on a hot day, do expect your legs to feel a little toasty. Coming to the riding modes, because this gets ride by wire technology, you have four different riding modes and the power and torque outputs can vary depending on the mode that you are in. In the sport and track mode, you have access to the entire 33.5 bhp and 27 newton meters, while in the urban and rain mode, that power and torque is capped to 25.4 bhp and 25 newton meters respectively. The ABS intervention also changes depending on the mode. So in the rain mode, the ABS is a little more aggressive. It holds your hand a little more while in the sport and track modes, it's a little bit more lenient and lets you have a little bit more fun with the bike. Having said that, I did feel that the rear brakes could have done with a little bit more bite. This is one sprightly engine. Almost at any time you open the throttle, the bike lunges ahead with a lot of enthusiasm. The vibes are also well within check for the most part and the slipper clutch makes your life easier. You also have glide through technology that allows you to navigate through slow moving traffic without having to press and release the clutch a thousand times. 
Another thing that I really appreciate is the fact that this bike can easily reach and maintain triple digit speeds. So you can go on those long rides and the bike remains absolutely planted on the highway thanks to its weight. If you want to know more about how the bike rides, you can check out our previous review of the bike because uh, the engine, like I said, is the same and the gearbox is also the same six speed unit. Now let's talk price. The dynamic kit will set you back by 12,000 rupees while the race kit will set you back by 5,000. And for the money, I feel that you are getting a lot, especially the fully adjustable folks. That is a complete win because it really increases the bandwidth of this bike. It was already a very versatile motorcycle. Yes, you could look at some other brands if you wanted a completely committed motorcycle, but if you wanted something that could do a bit of both, then this was your go-to option. And with the adjustable suspension, it only makes it even more capable and versatile. On top of that, since this is a factory fitment, you can be assured of the quality of the components and the job that is being done on the bike. So that is a great plus point as well. Now the base price of the bike is about 2.6 lakh rupees and TVS had increased it slightly when they introduced the RR310 with the BTO platform. Now we know that prices of things have been going up plus TVS has thrown in a few extra features in the instrument cluster so I think that price is justified even if you plan to go for the base variant of the bike. So in summary I would say that I really do like this bike and that's no surprise because I have been in love with this bike since the time it came out. It has been one of the best options in its class. If you want a versatile option then this is definitely the thing that you should go for. On top of that, I am happy to see that TVS is trying to innovate the segment and the market with innovative things like the build to order platform and with these kits, it definitely is a bike that you should definitely consider.